Okay, so for this unit, we're going to learn about the chi-square distribution. Now, first of all, you got to learn that this is not the chi-square distribution. It's chi, uh, Greek letter chi, pronounced K-I, chi, chi-square distribution. And the notation is where x belongs to, and I'm going to do my best. That's my attempt at making the Greek letter chi with a little square in the corner for chi-squared and df because this is degrees of freedom just like our t chart was based on degrees of freedom um, uh, with your sample size so your sample size you subtract one and that will give you your degrees of freedom the average for uh, chi squared is going to be equal to the degrees of freedom so the average is always n minus one so pretty great average to calculate and the variance, which is shown as lowercase sigma squared, is equal to two times the degrees of freedom. And the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So the square root of two times the degrees of freedom. So the examples I want to give you here is that the chi-squared graphs are skewed to the right. And there is a different graph for each degree of freedom. So we'll start off with uh, two degrees of freedom. This would be a sample size of three. And it looks like this inverse graph. And the zero is going to be all the way on the left-hand side. Unlike your normal curves where the zero is in the middle, these test statistics will be always positive. Think of the square as always positive you know making a number positive if you multiply a negative by itself it makes it positive so zero is going to be all the way on the left uh, and it's going to be skewed to the right so these are going to be <laughs> very different than your normal curves that you're used to dealing with but we're used to we're probably not going to have sample sizes this small so let's look at an example of degrees of freedom being equal to around 24 well we still have zero all the way on the left but you're going to have skewed right like that but once we start to get to really really big sizes once we approach uh, 90 degrees of freedom or sample sizes of 91 or more it approaches normality with a little bit of skewness to the right but for all intents and purposes any we're going to have approximately normal if degrees of freedom going to be greater than 90. All right, now we are not going to be dealing with sample sizes that large. We would hope to uh, bust out our Z curves, our Z tests, and uh, normal curve if that's the case. But I do want to show you before the end of this video how to use the chi-square table. Uh, the calculator will be doing this lookup for you, but I want to show you how you can use this table to your advantage. Now, we learned that the sample size and degrees of freedom are related by n minus 1. So five sam if you have five uh, sample size of 5, which is 5 categories in our problems, then you're going to have 4 degrees of freedom. And you if your alpha is 10%, we can look this up on the chart. So let's go get out the chi-square chart, and let's look up 4 degrees of freedom, which is right here. Let me get my highlighter out. Okay, so four degrees of freedom, and we just kind of follow that along to the right until we get to the 10% uh, percent for your alpha, which is 7.779. So that is your chi-squared value. Uh, if you are doing a confidence interval with chi-squared, this would be also called chi-squared right. But we are going to be doing uh, goodness of fit tests, independence tests, and homogeneous tests, which are always skewed right. So we do not need to indicate that this is chi-squared right. This will be our just chi-squared test value. So the sample size of a, if it sample size is 10, this is 9 degrees of freedom. So let's look at our chart at alpha of 0.05. So 9 degrees of freedom, 0.05. Looks like our chi-squared value is 16.919. That's a test value of 16.919.
and the calculator will turn that into a p-value to see if this was a rare event or not. And of course we're going to use an occurrence of a rare event to reject the null hypothesis. So if you've been at all, if you are at all familiar with the last few chapters, this chapter is going to be dealing with another set of hypothesis tests, but in this case using a very powerful chi-squared uh, test that will allow us to do the three tests I mentioned earlier in this video. The goodness of fit test, the um, independence test of independence, and also the homogeneous test. So finally, uh, let's have you look up this one yourself. Try pausing up, pausing the video and then unpausing to see if you got the answer right, which will conclude our little introduction to chi-squared. So the degrees of freedom here is 14. And if we look up 0 0.01 or 1% alpha on the next chart, let's take a look here. So we gotta scroll down just a little bit and let me pick a different color here. So 14 degrees of freedom because we had a sample size of 15 and 1% alpha up here. And that would give us a test value of 29.141. So this would probably probably be a very rare event, but we'll have to see as we do our problems and see what we get for our answers. 24.141. Well, thank you very much for watching this first video. The next one is going to cover all of the basics that we will use for our goodness of fit tests um, heading out into the next section.